Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fantastic, wonderful day and that you're all taking care of yourselves. I am filming this before I go to school. Let's, let's do it. Let's go for it. So today I'm going to talk about all the books I read in October and two fantastic things happened this month. I read a ton of books, 13 books. And I also finished all the books that I was going to have on my TBR. Pretty crazy, right? I, I made a TBR and I actually read all those books. Like, what? <laughs> Does that happen to people? I don't know. <laughs> it seems incredible. So let's get started with the books that I read this month. The first book that I read was Five Dark Fates by Kendra Blake. This is the fourth book in the Three Dark Crown series. So this is the conclusion to the story and I was quite disappointed with the previous book because I realized at that point I've kind of grown out of this type of fantasy and I honestly don't remember anything about this book. Like once I finished it I was just like it was out of my mind and it makes it hard for me to review this book because I don't feel like I can give a fair opinion but I was disappointed but I also think it has a lot to do with me and how when p books are published like one each year, it's very hard to reconnect with the story and it takes much longer to get into it. There are parts that I enjoyed and I guess it was like a fine conclusion. There's something about the way she writes that I don't agree with the choices that she makes as an author, like the choices the characters make and the way the story goes. It doesn't make sense to me and in a way I think that's why I started this series. I I was excited by the prospect that I couldn't predict what would happen, but at some point I got annoyed that it wasn't going the way I wanted, if that makes sense. But it's basically about a fantasy on this island and these three queens all have to fight for the throne. And this is the fourth one. Also, I gave the book two stars. After that, I read Gideon the Ninth. This is a new-ish release by Tamsin Muir. I actually have a reading vlog up for this if you want to check out my detailed opinions on it. But this is basically about Gideon the Ninth, who's grown up in this necromancer's house where people can do necromantic things but she can't and then she's taken away to this Victorian castle together with the, the leader of like that necromantic house that she has grown up in but she doesn't know who her parents are and they're taken to the Victorian house where they basically have to solve all these clues and mysteries to become, I don't know, something, I don't remember what the name was, but the plot isn't really important. This book has quite flowery writing and it reminded me quite a lot of the Nevernight Chronicles in the way that it is written and it has such vulgar language and I laughed out loud at several points. I think the only critique I have for this book is that the climax lasted way too long, like the fighting scenes, but the way that you slowly get more and more information in this book is really interesting and the things you know just like get more developed. I wish there were more boundaries when it comes to the magic, but it also leaves a lot of room to explore the magic in the further sequels of this book, which I'm really excited for. I, I love this book. I gave it four stars just because of like the ending and some, some things were kind of overwhelming. It took me a little bit to get into it because the writing is kind of complex in a way, but I definitely recommend this fantasy. It, it was really great. After that, I read Monstrous Volume 1. I absolutely loved like the art in this one. It's just so grotesque. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can find like a picture of something that's just it's so violent guys this is like this lady that gets sm like smushed by this and she just looks so horrifying like it was just perfect to read in like preparation for halloween and all that scary stuff i really like that people people just look so terrifying in this one i did have a hard time understanding the world because it's like you're reading this complex high fantasy but it's in comic book form and so it's harder to like remember the information and obtain the information so it actually sticks because there's not that much time to like repeat stuff so once they say something that's important to the world or the characters or something like that you have to remember it because they're probably not going to repeat it again and I, I've heard that it gets better and I gave four stars. I think it's really good. I think it's a great idea I really like the characters. The main character is really interesting and there's one really really cute character who's like half fox Half human kind of and I just really liked the the way that people have different opinions about history I thought found that very interesting. Yeah, and the art is amazing super dark, you know So I'm really really excited to continue with this and get into the world again I think I have to pick up the next one quite soon so I don't forget after that, I finished listening to this audiobook. This is 
The Diary of a Bookseller, I think, by Sean Bythel. He basically owns this huge secondhand bookshop in London and he, it is exactly what it says it is. It is him writing something down every single day for a period of time. And so it is a bookseller book, like it, nothing happens, there's nothing that the book accomplishes, there is no driven plot. But Sean, he is just so like sarcastic and passive aggressive in a way. It was like he he observes things in a way where you know what he thinks about the things he observes, but he's not telling you what he thinks. He's just saying the stuff. Like he will say like this girl she ate ice cream in my store. And then that's it. But you know he doesn't really like it. Like <laughs> But he just doesn't say so. And I find the humor really funny. I had a hard time getting into the narrative voice in the audiobook because it's sometimes it's it's at a pitch which makes it actually hard for my ear to hear properly what he's saying. And I think actually this is like a physiological thing. I think it's this don't correct me if I'm wrong, but it's easy for women to hear high pitched noises because they need to hear like when their baby is screaming and it's harder for us to hear like low pitched voices and I think this is true for everyone as well like when you're singing and there's a choir soprano voices are easier to hear and need less people singing than the alt voices so I don't know I had a difficulty with the narrator but once I got into it I really got into it and really enjoyed it I feel like I would listen to this like every day like what he had written every day for the rest of my life like I just want to hear him like in the morning and yeah but I really liked it I ended up giving it four stars actually despite that I had some difficulties getting into it but also the post woman in this her name is Wilma <laughs> and it just caught me so off guard every time it's like yeah I deliver this package to Wilma and I'm like oh yeah yeah that's right her name is Wilma <laughs> which was just so weird after that I read Death Note volume 8 I am not really loving this second part of the story I'm having difficulty getting into it and I'm not really there with the characters and there is this one thing that happens in this book where they exchange a girl for a death note and there's just so many mistakes like they're saying like they're being so careful with how this exchange is gonna happen so that the other person doesn't kill them when they're doing the exchange but if you're giving the death note to them they can just kill you right afterwards because they've seen your face they know your name so I don't understand like why they're making this super careful exchange so no one gets killed but the person can just kill you right afterwards I, I don't I don't get it like it's it's so dumb and it seems so obvious and this book is supposed to be so smart and like intelligent and you're like how did they even think of that and like but in calculating but I felt like this book wasn't that and I'm really falling out with the story and it's making me so disappointed because I love the first books and now it's just I don't know it's making me so sad but I think I have to like continue with it soon so I can finish it and like be in the world if that makes sense I gave it three stars. After that I picked up The Near Witch by V. E. Schwab. This is her debut novel and it has like witches in it and that's why I picked it up for Halloween. It's kind of about this small little town and you never get to know anything about the world except this small little town but it does seem like a fantasy in a way because this town isn't really a town that exists and everyone in this town have, have always known everyone in this town. Oh my god, I just love saying town. And they never met a stranger, and then a stranger comes in and this child goes missing and they think that is it is the stranger that took the child and the main character, who is a young girl, is trying to find the children and protect this new stranger, which she thinks didn't do it. And so the story goes on. I didn't have a problem with this book, I gave it three stars, but it's just... First off, I don't like middle grade and I gotta stop reading middle grade because it's just not for me. And I gotta stop reading V.A. Schwab because I read so many of her books now. I think I've read eight of her books. And I just am kind of disappointed every single time because I read The Darker Shades of Magic and I loved it so much. And I have to stop reading her stuff because I don't like it. I think it's anticlimactic. I think it's simplistic. I don't think it brings that much to the literary world um, for myself, my literary world. Not for everyone else, I can't speak for everyone else obviously, but those are my thoughts.
After that, I picked up something that I pre-ordered and just got in the mail. This is To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. Becky Chambers wrote the Wayfarers trilogy, uh, which I really enjoyed, and I actually gave this five stars. Is that possible? I gave this five stars. It is it is very, very cool. It says that it's a novella, actually. It's about this ship with these four people, I think, that are sent out to explore extraterrestrial life uh, and they are exploring four planets I think and so the book is divided into four sections each when they are on a different planet and they constantly get these newscasts of what is happening on earth but they always get them five years later so there is this whole debate about if they should stay updated what is happening on earth or if you just continue on the mission and there's something about the way she writes that makes it so human and so I, I don't know I read this in one day and maybe that's why because I connect with books that I read really quickly but I just felt really connected to this book and I really enjoyed it and I don't know I think there's something nice I don't know why I liked it so much but it was just very very human and I like the ending I like endings that are leaves it open. I don't know, that's like maybe an unpopular opinion, but I like it when you don't actually know what happened at the end. So yeah, I recommend you check this out. It was like a special small little read, you know? After that, I read another audiobook. This is Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I hadn't, haven't read anything by her. This is a new release and everyone was saying it was her best work. And it is a thriller, what was it called? Uh, crime novel kind of so I just kind of wanted to check it out and it's about this girl who gets a job babysitting at this big house out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> where she has to babysit these three kids and the three kids basically hate her and she just kind of has to take the job right away and at the same time she's writing this letter from prison in the future telling her that telling you about what happened because she's trying to get a good lawyer so I gave this book four stars I really enjoyed it it's like an easy read like it's just enjoyable if you like thrillers and that kind of thing like it isn't something special I gave it four stars I really liked it and I liked the resolution I think like the big reveal I, I thought it was quite good but it also seemed kind of like simple but in a way I like that too so those are all my thoughts on it Next, I read Ally of Law by Brandon Sanderson. This is Mist Worn Era 2, first book in this trilogy. And these books are definitely much shorter and you're following two new characters many, many years later than the first books. And now like guns and cars and stuff are invented. So it's a definitely like a different feeling, more like a steampunk fantasy feeling in it. And I actually really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. I liked it quite a bit, but it definitely doesn't go up to like the other Mistborn books, but I already kind of knew that. More of a enjoying the dialogue between the two main characters who work together, that kind of thing. I don't really want to tell you anything of the plot because it isn't really important, but it's more like a solving crime story as well, together with like the guns and the thing. But what I found interesting and I didn't know before is that Mistborns are a legend in this book and they don't really exist anymore and I'm really interested to see how that is gonna evolve throughout this little trilogy. After that I read Doctor Sleep by Stephen King. This is the sequel to The Shining which I also read two summers ago I think and just like then I really liked it. This is more like magical realism actually and it's quite like a different story but I really liked the magical element in this book and compared to The Shining, this one isn't scary at all in my opinion. It's really more like magical realism. It doesn't definitely has like scary elements, but it isn't horror in any way uh, in my opinion. I actually like this one better than The Shining. I just know that Stephen King isn't for me and I think that's okay. Like I, I can see how good his writing is. Like objectively, I really get why people really like his stuff but it's just not for me and I did enjoy it I think I even gave it oh I gave it three stars but it was definitely worth the read and if you like even magical realism maybe you'll enjoy this like a mix of horror and magical realism it is basically about da Danny when he grows up so the little kid in The Shining he becomes an adult and he becomes just like his father an alcoholic and then he meets this little girl Abra that also has the shining ability and this whole book basically revolves around the ability 
The Shining, and that's that's kind of what this book continues to explore. And if you like that element of The Shining, I definitely think you should check out the sequel. After that, I read Frankenstein by Junji Ito, and this is a manga adaption of Frankenstein, and it also has some other short stories. And the Frankenstein adaption, I was so disappointed with. Everything that is great about Frankenstein, the, the writing, the way the story is told, and the, the elements that make the story great, were completely lost in this adaption, in my opinion. Uh, but maybe it's because I love Frankenstein so much and I really like Mary Shelley's writing and obviously this is like a manga so it has different different qualities and I really like the artwork. I think the artwork is really good. It's kind of detailed and, and gory and stuff. Yeah, it's like really scary in a way, the way that it is drawn. So I wasn't a big fan of the Frankenstein story, which takes up most of this book, but then it had all these short stories afterwards that is probably written by Ito, and they were great. I loved the short stories. I don't know if this is a male or a woman, actually. So I'm definitely going to check out other works by this creator, because I really like the art, I really like the stories that the creator wrote themselves, but I didn't actually write, like... The Frankenstein element, which was kind of disappointing, but I just, I think it's it's someone to look out for. Like, I don't know, I thought it was really cool. Then the classic of the month is Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. I've long been wanting to read this book, and I do really, really like Fahrenheit 451. And funny story, the number 451 is haunting me everywhere. Like, it is actually everywhere. It is the number of my apartment back in Sweden, and it's my mother's golf membership number, and before that it was my dad's golf membership number, which is a complete coincidence. It's just crazy. And then my dad went to the the bank and then when he clicked the button for the waiting number, he got 451. And it's just a weird situation, okay? <laughs> But this is basically about these two young boys who are 12 years old. One is born at the day of Halloween and one is born the day after and they couldn't be more different. So this happens a week before Halloween, this carousel, carousel, this carnival. This carnival comes to town and they have these carousels like the mirror room, a maze, all these kind of different things. There's two people there who are very mysterious and people kind of transform and it's all this weird magical realism things happen. I really like the premise of the story. I like the characters and there's also one of the dads of the two kids is a major character in the book which I really appreciated. It barely ever happens that a parent is such a big role in the story as this person was and the relationships between the three characters were just really interesting. I really like that. The writing is extremely, extremely flowery and very descriptive and there's just, I highlighted so many things because I think it's a very beautiful and unique way of expressing oneself and I really like that but it just was so much that I could appreciate the beauty of it but it was almost like poetry so it made me hard to connect with the story because it was like over the top so in a way I really liked it because it was different and it was refreshing and it was very creative and inspiring way to write and to experience but it made me distance myself from the characters so it was like good and bad and there was definitely like a lot of clock and time similes and I'm not really sure what it meant but I really liked that it had like a running thread throughout the whole story. It felt very anticlimactic and I didn't really feel like there was so much at stake even though there was and I think that was something worth the writing as well. I also forgot to mention one book. I also listened to the audiobook of In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware after I listened to The Turn of the Key. And this one I really didn't like as much. It's like three stars and it was just like I wasn't really engaged in the story, but it's the same narrator and I really like that narrator, so that's kind of why I picked it up. But it's it's just different, but also a lot the same. I don't know. You should check it out if you like horror. I, I thought it was okay. I mean, I don't really have that many thoughts on it. If you like thrillers, I mean, or crime story, so murder mystery. Oh well, okay, that's it for this reading wrap up. I hope you enjoyed. Comment below all the amazing books that you read in October and your reading plans you have for November. I hope you have an amazing, amazing day, that you're taking care of yourself, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!